I would describe Nate Bell's star system as controversial. Interesting. Kino. <laughs> Unique. My name is Nate Bell and I am internship manager for the School of Cinema and Media Arts. I also teach film history. No, it looks like Nate Bells is fully objective and also fully subjective and fully confusing, so. He rates things very low and it gives you the impression that he doesn't like a movie even if he does. You know, you would look at it and you wouldn't really think, oh, this, this guy likes movies. Well, to give a little context, I grew up in the age of the movie guide. This is before YouTube, before Rotten Tomatoes, before Wikipedia. And my North Star, when it came to movies, was Leonard Maltin's movie guide. Uh, the second most influential movie guide, though, is Leslie Hollywell's movie guide. Hollywell was a British guy, and he had a book that got published every two or three years with updates. And his rating system intrigued me. So over the years, I adopted that. I think it's a fine system. I don't really like it because it's very misleading. But, I mean, it's his system, so I guess he likes it. I hold films to a very high standard for a reason. Because I love them so much and want them to be great. Now, consistency is what I'm striving for. If you look down the list of one-star films, or two-star films, or three-star films, I hope that there is an internal consistency to my ratings, a logic to my rating system. Five-star movies might include Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love, Tarkovsky's Stalker, Hitchcock's Psycho, William Wyler's The Best Years of Our Lives, and so on. Those are five-star movies. They represent the very best of what I've seen. The creme de la creme. I think on a fundamental level, uh, I just like throwing stars up on my ratings. Uh, and that's about it, you know? I don't really think too hard about it. If I liked it, I liked it. If I didn't, I didn't. I usually never rate anything, usually below a three. Like, my average movie would be three stars out of five. When someone doesn't know how they feel about a film, or they're not sure whether it's good or bad, they usually get three stars for that film, right? Well, to me, that, that kind of ruins the point. It, it actually demeans the star system. See, a star from Nate may be worth more than a star from Tony. Let me explain my rating system. And this is lifted from the Leslie Hollywell rating system. One star indicates a minor point of merit within an unsatisfactory whole. Two stars indicates general competence and a generally entertaining film. Three stars indicates a high standard of professional excellence. Four stars is first rate, probably a masterpiece. And I reserve a fifth star for fine distinctions at the top of the scale. Personal favorites, all timers, maybe a perfect film. Now, no stars no stars indicates a totally routine or worse film. Those films, I'm sorry to have seen at all. It is the equivalent of the back of my hand. Technical innovations alone don't make a great movie, nor does even a great story, right? You look for a singular artist. You look for a voice uh, working at the very top of their game. Um, when the subject of a film and the style of a film meet on a high plane of movie art, that's a masterpiece, but those are rare. That rarely happens. Even the great directors don't make, you know, masterpieces every single time. I rate films publicly because it's enjoyable, I guess. Um, 
I do it, I guess, so that I can formulate my thoughts coherently and give a solid answer instead of just being like, oh, I kind of like that movie, or oh, I don't really like it. Uh, I personally choose to rate films uh, because I like seeing what movies, you know, really attracted me, and uh, I like, you know, keeping tabs on what my friends are watching and, you know, what things they enjoy, and I think a rating system is really good in articulating that kind of enjoyment, uh, but I do it for fun. So this, this compulsion to rate and to organize and to list is, um, is a very human compunction. It, it's particularly strong among people who are interested in movies, right? We have this need to list and to rate and to catalog and to share um, and to come up with different favorites and, uh, and to seek validation through that and to seek community through that. Um, I would say film has changed my life um, in just almost every way. My favorite movie is Arrival and other movies like that, they really just reframe my perspective on life. They kind of just help me, like for example that one specifically helped me see the value in relationships and the value in um, good things even if they're not necessarily all good. The art of film has changed my life because it's how I relate to people. If I'm watching a movie and I see the characters and I relate to them, I can be, I can say like I've been there, I felt that. It's kind of become part of what I live for in life. And like the art of film has transcended the medium and has become part of my life itself. When I was 12 years old, my parents were running a small group out of our church, out of our home for young adults. And um, at the end of the Bible study, my dad would show a movie. And if, uh, if I stayed up late enough, I was allowed to watch the movie with the group. And I was introduced to a lot of classic films this way. Alfred Hitchcock movies, um, my favorite movie, 12 Angry Men. Uh, and I remember watching with this group of older people and having this epiphany watching a film, a light switched on and I thought, I didn't know movies could do that. I think that film is more valuable than people think because a lot of people think that film is only something to pass time or something to escape from. Um, that just changes how you interact with people on a day-to-day -day basis, what kind of media you consume and how you push yourself as an artist. It just kind of unites people. They can just completely reframe your understanding of the world in a positive way. I would say be true to your heart, be honest. Don't change your rating to suit mass taste or to fit in. Um, be idiosyncratic, be weird, be personal, and you'll be happier in the long run.